Hello and welcome to the Neurosurgery Written Board Crash Course. My name is Chen. Today we'll be talking about neurocortical layers. So in order to talk about the cerebral cortex, uh, we're mostly going to focus on gray matter. And in particular, we're going to fo focus on the layers of the green gray matter. There are two major categories, uh, namely the neocortex or the allocortex. The neocortex is comprised of six layers and, ne and it's called neocortex, neo for new, which is the latest addition in the evolutionary tree and is the bulk of the human cerebral cortex. And we'll cover each of those layers in more in detail. The allocortex is basically, uh, allo stands for Greek for other, meaning that there are, uh, they are other than the six layers uh, of cortex uh, as depicted in the neocortex. And under the big category of allocortex, uh, we have archicortex and paleocortex. The archicortex, archi is Greek for beginning, which is basically one of the first cortices that are formed, uh, which is in modern human uh, anatomy includes the hippocampal formation and uh, important for memory. And the second class is the paleocortex. Uh, paleo is Greek for old cortex. And this is uh, largely comprised of the olfactory system. Now these two systems will be covered in other videos. Now the neocortex gray matters are formed in vertical columns and they're known as functional units. The embryologically they're developed from the inner layers, which is the layer six, first with subsequent superficial migrations uh, into layer one. So as we mentioned before, there are six layers of the neocortex gray matter, and they're listed here on the left-hand side. I like to think of them as three big groups, with the first group being the two M's at both ends of the gray matter the molecular in layer one and multiform in layer six. They're roughly alphabetical. And so MO is on the top in layer one and MU is on the bottom layer six multiform. Next, there are external layers and internal layers. And obviously the external layers are on the top because they're more external. And the external layers are more related to communications with other parts of the cortex. The internal layers are responsible for input and output to the outside world, such as your spinal cord, your peripheral nerve system, or your thalamus, etc. Each of the internal and external layers can be uh, subdivided into a granular and pyramidal layer. The pyramidal layers contain pyramidal cells which have long axons vertically and is therefore suitable for and responsible for transmitting efferent signals. And the granular layer uh, contains granular or stellate cells which are really uh, well suited for receiving inputs and therefore they are the main receiving cell types. So now let's go over some of the important layers in more detail. Layer one in the molecular layer really is a layer that receives diffuse afferent fibers from lower brain and it summarizes all those signals and controls the excitability of this region. Layer two and three are basically the mediators uh, of the connections with other parts of the brain. And as we mentioned before, the granular layers are the major input areas and the pyramidal layers are the major output areas. And so layer two, the external granular layer is responsible for receiving input from other cort cortices of other parts of the brain. With layer three, the external pyramidal layers uh, 
responsible for sending signals to other parts of the cortex. In layer three and five, the external and internal pyramidal layers both contains a cell type called Martinotti cells. These are basically small multipolar neurons that sends their axons up to cortical layer one, the molecular layer. And if you remember that molecular layer is responsible for modulating excitability, the Martinotti cells function is basically to send signal up to layer one and serve as a uh, cortical dampening mechanism or function. So when the pyramidal neurons, which are present in layer three and five, starts to get overexcited, the Martinotti cells will start to send inhibitory signals to the surrounding neurons. And hence, they're found in both internal and external pyramidal layers. Now let's talk about layer six before we go into layer four and five. Layer six is called the multiform layer and is basically the efferent fibers to thalamus. And it contains the efferent cortical thalamic interconnection. I typically like to remember this by thinking that layer six is anatomically the closest of the six layers to thalamus and hence is responsible for connecting between the, the gray matter and the thalamus. So layer four receives the chief sensory input from the outside world and therefore is really well developed in the somatosensory cortex. It contains the cell type specialized in receiving information, which is the stellate cells. And in the case of the primary somatosensory cortex, the sensory information is transmitted up from the spinal thalamic tract to the VPL nucleus of thalamus. And these thalamocortical projections then from the thalamus uh, goes from the thalamus to layer four of the gray matter and to form a dense horizontal plexus of myelinated fibers. And this band is called the outer band of Ballinger as illustrated by the red arrow. The outer band of Ballinger is contiguous throughout the gray matter and is especially prominent in another, vis uh, in another sensory cortex, which is the visual cortex. This band in the visual cortex is referred to as the band of Janari. And this band is visible to the naked eye during the brain cutting after a dense plexus of myelinated axons uh, is after this is myelin stained. And this is illustrated in the uh, picture in the bottom left and highlighted by the blue arrow. Layer five is the chief output layer. And it is the main motor efferent to the brainstem and spinal cord. And hence, this layer is enlarged in the motor cortex. The major cell type of this layer is is called the Bet cells. And it is basically the largest pyramidal cells in the body. This layer also contains the Martinotti cells that is mentioned in layer three that is responsible for modulating the excitability of the cortex. This layer also has the horizontal fibers and is also known as the inner band of Ballinger. These are my references. I hope you find this helpful. We'll see you next time.